Good morning, YouTube, BookTube, the world. I thought I would make a morning video since I no one's going to be busting through the doors. Now, if I was one thing I was going to notice, I mean, I was going to tell you guys. You see my head always turning that direction. I'm looking out the front door. Our front door has, uh, I'll show it to you. See, there's our front door, see? And the front door, I can look out the front door. And sometimes I'm thinking I'm seeing somebody at the front door. And there's usually nobody there. It's just a habit I have looking out the front door. I mean, I'm going on being by myself for seven days here in the house and no one has come to the door except the mailman or the male woman. And it's just a habit. Uh, sometimes um, I hear the door. The door doesn't always <clears throat> close tightly. We got that door last year. It's a new door. And you have to really push it really hard and lock it to keep it closed. So that's why I'm always turning that direction. Anyway, so it is March the 14th, 2019. It is 7.14 in the morning here. It is 69 degrees inside the Hermit Hut. And um, I'm writing in my diary like I've been doing since I can remember, well, as I said, I've been writing in my diaries since since high school, 1968. But I really didn't really <coughs> start. Excuse me, I get. <coughs> excuse me, I. Uh, I didn't really start writing every single day until about oh at least 1975 and um, as you all know the, the old old story when I left California back in 78 I, I burned all my diaries from my youth and so I only have from 1978 until March the 14th, 2019. And for this year, the year 2019, I'm on page 233. I usually write around a thousand pages a year. Well, now remember, <clears throat> I use wide, uh, wide, wide rule uh, filter paper or I forgot what kind of paper this is called you can use college rule if I used college rule it probably wouldn't be that many pages every year but I like wide rule because it's uh, I don't know I just got used to and I I print when I write you, you can't tell my my writing is just my handwriting, it's like chicken scratch. But no one's going to read this. I, I write it and then I put it in my, uh, one of my folders. Like I, I have two folders. You guys know that. First folder is from day one, first day of March, until the 15th of March. And then the second folder is from the 16th of March until the end of the month, which is the 31st, which will be a Sunday. It's just because I can, I've been writing so much because I'm alone, I'm already getting kind of, it's getting kind of difficult to put paper in here. See, you know, I just, see I put in the folder, I put in there the, my receipts and and uh, I have the calendar. So it says here, Carol leaves on March the 7th. 
My wife comes back the 21st of March. The 20th is the first day of spring here in West Michigan. So I'm writing in my diary and I got out to read this morning, exalted above the heavens, the risen and ascended Christ. That's one thing you have to, I have to keep in mind. You know, it's like one thing else I wanted to say is that I've been making booktube videos you know, for over going on three years. Now I've been on in YouTube for 10 years, but in the early, early days, I just made videos once in a while of our grandchildren or nature or my flower garden or some nature thing. But then I got into booktube and when I first started <coughs> booktube, I did it, I, I was looking at my earlier videos for booktube or YouTube and it has book collector. I am a book collector. I'm always getting these comments. Do you read all the books that you get? No, I don't. I, I am a book collector. Now I read all the time, but I've always, even before, uh, okay, it goes back to being, and you all know the story, I'm just like, I'm always repeating myself, but I was not going to go into the Christian ministry. And uh, so when I was in Bible college, which was back in, uh, I'm back in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, if you're going to be, okay, it goes back, I am in the, the Presbyterian denomination or Presbyterian Christian theological spiritual tradition. Presbyterians believe in the educated ministry. Now, what that means is that in order to be ordained in a Presbyterian church, well, the, at least the ones in the Presbyterian church in America, you have to go to college for four years. And then after you, do, you get your bachelor's degree in a, in a, a liberal arts or a Bible college, you go to seminary and then you go to seminary for three years. And then after seminary, you in the Presbyterian, you get an internship, which means that you work under a minister in a church for a year. And then after a year, you go before the presbytery and you are examined by the presbytery, which, you know, there's different presbyteries. Every part of the United States has different presbyteries. And you go before elders and before ordained ministers and they examine you in all kinds of things. Uh, church history, doctrine, Old and New Testament, uh, all kinds of things. They examine you in all these different areas of the Bible and and sometimes you have to preach a sermon before a small group of elders and ministers. And after you go through this examination and make sure that you're orthodox and that you are of good standing, then you are licensed and not ordained. And after your license, then you're able to, then you're up for being, a church can call you if they, and so then you get a call, a church says, come to over to our church, wherever that is, maybe it could be in Louisiana, or it could be in Michigan, and you go to that church, and the elders of that church, they, they, they talk to you, maybe you preach a sermon, and then they decide if they want to call you. And if you get called to that church, then they ordain you. That's a long process. So you go to college for four years, you go to seminary for three years, you have an internship, and then you have to go get licensed. And then maybe you'll get a call. Now, I never did. That's the point. I never got a call. I went to I went to Bible. I 
went to college, I went to seminary, I did an internship, and I did an internship for two years in Houston, Texas, in a Presbyterian church because uh, I only could do it part-time because they couldn't pay us. Usually an intern gets some kind of pay, but the church that I, we did our internship could not pay us. So Carol had to work. So I would do my internship and all the responsibilities and duties when before Carol would go to work. Carol did second shift. So in the mornings and the afternoons, I would do my internship. And on Sundays, I would teach Sunday school and I would preach. And I would go to Presbyterian meetings and I would do all kinds of things. House visitation, hospital visitation, involved in theological conferences and mission conferences. And I go to to session meetings with the elders who ran the church and I would meet with the minister and I did all this for a couple of years and then I looked for a call. Well, first then I had to get my my license renewed and uh, I never did. It's a long, long, uh, horrible story. So I won't go into that. So. If you're a Presbyterian minister and you're going to college and you're going to seminary and you're doing an internship, you collect books. That's the point of this whole ramble. A Presbyterian minister, because he's educated, he's required to have a huge library because he is supposed to know all these different subjects. Church history, theology practical theology, pastoral theology, Old Testament, New Testament. You, and in the Presbyterian Church, they preach to the Bible. From Genesis to, you go, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, chapter 2 of Genesis, and you go, you preach verse by verse, chapter by chapter. If you go to a good Presbyterian Church that's evangelical, that's, Reform their exegetical preaching. They preach through the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Now, sometimes they might take a section of verses. They go through the Psalms, they go through the Proverbs, they go through the New, the Gospels, they go through all the Pauline epistles, they go through Revelations, and they preach chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and then in a in a Presbyterian church, they preach doctrinal sermons. So you have sermons on the doctrine of God, or sermons on the doctrine of man, or sermons on the sacraments, or sermons on the Ten Commandments, or sermons on baptism. So you have to know all these things. You have to know Old Testament theology. You've got to know all about all these books of the Bible. You've got to know systematic theology. And then you got to teach Sunday school. Maybe you got to teach a class in adult Sunday school on church history, or you got to teach a class on on the family, or on you know whatever cultural issues about what is the Christian view of ecology, what is the Christian view of politics, what is the Christian view of uh, anything. So you got to know a lot of stuff and you got to be reading and you got to be able to, when you preach and teach, you've got to be able to speak to the contemporary culture. You just can't, your sermons have to apply to everyday life in the world. So a Presbyterian minister accumulates a big library because in, usually in Presbyterian churches you get a book allowance. And then you're allowed to go to, and some ministers, they go back to school. You know, they have refresher classes or they uh, do all kinds of ongoing education. Some take sabbaticals and they go back to school for, you know, I don't know. Some these seminaries have special things for ministers to, you know, brush up on certain things. Of course, in, in Presbyterians, you have theology conferences. Every year, uh, someplace you go for a week and you have all these 
theological lectures and you meet with ministers and elders and things like that. I did that in my younger days. So that's why I have such a big library. But I never went into the ministry. Okay, that's the point. I never went into the gospel ministry, and that was a long time ago. But I still collect books because I am... I'm a student of, of the Bible, and uh, I like reading good Christian literature, and that's why I started BookTube. It's not that I come here to preach or to... Con I'm just being who I am as a Christian bookworm. I'm not out here. I'm just being who I am as a man, a man of God. I mean, everybody in BookTube has their interests, has their interpretation of reality, how they experience everyday life. And I am the same way. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to be who I am. I'm, and uh, like I got a comment yesterday, people want to engage in debate and, and argue what I say. I'm not here to argue. I'm not here to debate. Uh, those comments I got yesterday, I just deleted them. I'm not going to. I'm not here to debate. I'm just here to be who I am, share my love of literature, not only Christian literature, but also secular literature. I've always been, even though I've collected a Christian library, I also read history. I read biographies of poets and writers and artists. I read art history. I read European history, I read letters, memoirs, biographies, literary criticism, I read all kinds of stuff. Like I've been reading this novel I showed you yesterday, The Merry Men by Carolyn Shute. I read this all day yesterday again. And uh, this is the other book I have <coughs> by um, Carolyn Shute, The Beans of Egypt, Maine. There's a picture of her in the back. And then I, I well, the other day I, I went to local thrift stores. I had to go to the store and pick up a prescription. So I always stop at <coughs> local thrift stores and I found this, Those Tremendous Mountains, the story of the Lewis and Clark Expedition by David Freeman Hawk. Now, I have books on the Lewis and Clark expedition, but I like this little one. It's a, it's a Norton edition, and it has, it's just a little thing, but it has these nice little illustrations in it. This is a nice little book, clean text. It has this, just a nice little thing. Oh, it cost me 26 cents. Then I found Michelangelo and the Pope's Ceiling by Ross King. This is nonfiction. It's on the Sistine Chapel. It's like nonfiction. This I had this already in our library, so I'll take this to the book nook. It's on the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo, a great Renaissance artist. And then I picked up. Uh, so when I went to Salvation Army that day, they had these huge bins that they brought into the, and somebody had just unloaded a ton of books, paperbacks. And there was these big bins, and they're all just filled with these books. So I went through them to see what I could find. And I, I found this one, you know, the Michelangelo's Pope Ceiling. And I found this one, the Servant's Map. Servants of the Map by Andrea Bar Barnett. These are short stories. And uh, she received the National Book Award f for her novel. Her, uh, it's not novel, I think it's Stories, Ship Fever. I had this already in our library. It took me two days to find this down the lower level. I found it. I knew I had it because it was, it was, it was uh, cataloged in my library thing. So now I have two volumes of her short stories, The Servants of the Map, and then I have Ship Fever. I recommend looking at her short stories. 
And then I found this uh, novel by a, a New Zealand writer, Alan Duff, Once Were Warriors. Once We Were Warriors is Alan Duff's harrowing vision of his country's indig indigenous people 200 years after the English conquest. In prose that is both raw and compelling, it tells the story of Beth Heck, a Maori woman struggling to keep her family from falling apart despite the squalor and violence of the housing projects in which they live, conveying both the rich textures of Maori tradition and the wounds left by its absence. Once Were Warriors is a masterpiece of unblinking realism irresistible energy and great sorrow. Now, this is a vintage international, and I've said in, in videos, if you see any vintage internationals, they're really worth buying. They usually publish good books. So, you want to see a vintage international. Always check these out if you see a vintage international. And then I found uh, a book in the New York Review Books, classics, in that bin, The Siege of Christian de Pori. This is a, a novel, it's like historical fiction of, of colonialism in India. And then I found this novel by this British writer, The Closed Circle, a novel by Jonathan Cole. It says here, the authors of, author of the Rotters Club. I had that already in our library. The Rotters Club by Jonathan Cole. So when I saw this, I knew uh, I had this already in our library. So now I have two of his novels. I didn't know when I bought it that it was marked. Uh, it's been, uh, it has underlining in it, but it was only 60 cents. And then I found this historical fiction at Salvation Army that day. Electricity, Electricity, a novel by Victoria Glenning. Now, Victoria Glenning, I have her biographies. She's a very well-known biographer, and she's written biographies on Trollope, Rebecca West, Edith Sitwell, Elizabeth Bowen. Those I have. I have Rebecca West alive. I have her on Trollope. Uh, I have her on Edith Sitwell, and. Elizabeth Bowen. So I had never seen one of her novels, and so I picked that up. So you see, as a you know, as a Christian, I read all kinds of books, and I've spent my whole life in libraries and bookstores and used book sales and thrift stores, and I love literature, not just Christian literature, but I like good, good novels and good historical history books and. I read biographies on philosophers and poets and painters and beatniks and, and uh, politicians and I read on American history. I like reading about all kinds of things because I I like reading about birds. I like reading about about the moon. I like reading about the mountains and the rivers and reading about American Indians and reading about Bohemians in Greenwich Village in the 1920s or the history of photography. You know, I'm just saying, so I accumulate a lot of books. I have a lot of interest. So, uh, but I don't read all the books you see in my videos. I, I am a book collector. I am a reader. I am a book worm. I am a book... I love books, and I always have. And now, in my later days, I have the resources, and so I buy them. And, you know, I don't spend that much money. I think I spent, the other day, $6 for... No, I only spent... Well, when you get my age, you get senior discounts. <laughs> so I bought all these books for $5. Yeah. Well, now remember, wait a minute here. I gotta take some of these out. Let me see here. Take some of these out.
Yeah. I got all these books for $5. And it's good books. I mean, I really have there enough to read for a couple months if I just stuck with those books. So I don't always read what's... You know, I notice in book two, people are always buying the current books, the, what's current, what's in the New York Times bestsellers list. Or I tend to read... I mean, there's been good books published for hundreds of years. Some people I know on BookTube just read the classics, or they just read graphic novels, or they read science fiction or fantasy, or or they read on the Second World War, or whatever. But there's always good books at thrift stores and used book sales. And some people just use the library. Or they get books on their on their Kindle or their whatever. That's fine too. I just like having physical books uh, so around me. I just enjoy doing that. So I'm just been that's enough rambling. Uh, that's a book haul. That's what I've been reading. That's why I have such a huge library. And uh, but I'm a human being. First of all, I'm a human being. I'm a man. Uh, you know, I eat, I sleep. I have. I'm a. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a husband. I'm a neighbor. I'm a friend. Uh, you know, I got a. I got. I got blood pumping through my heart. Uh, I'm not some kind of religious fanatic. Uh, I'm just here to be who I am as a lover of God. And I love books. I love bookstores. I love used book sales. I love I love God. I love the Bible. <laughs> and these are the things I talk about. I'm just being who I am. I'm not out to uh, to beat you over the head with the Bible. I'm just here to, to let my light shine. So I hope you're having a good week. I'll download this video. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. And like I said, I'm not here to argue. I'm not here to persuade people. I'm not here to shove religion down your throat. I'm here just because I love books. And like I said, when I started my BookTube channel, I didn't see any place people showing Christian literature, not only current Christian literature, but throughout the 2,000 years of church history. And I know those things. And so I wanted to share Christian literature along with other books. So until next time, I hope you're having a good day. Bye.